Welcome to the Villa Schutzenberger. This unique building houses the European Audiovisual Observatory, part of the Council of Europe here in Strasbourg. Before starting our visit, look at the gateway with its elegant curves of black wrought iron. The stone structure and imposing metal gate make for an impressive entrance. The villa was built in 1900 by French architects Jules Berniger and Henri Gustave Kraft, who also designed the Galerie Lafayette in Strasbourg and many other Art Nouveau gems in the Alsatian capital. The Villa Schutzenberger owes its name to an illustrious family of brewers who managed one of the oldest breweries in Alsace, no longer operational. The villa was originally built as a private residence for the Schutzenberger family. Then it became the property of the city of Strasbourg, who made it available to the European Parliamentary Association, the European Audiovisual Observatory, and the European Platform of Regulatory Authorities, hosted by the Observatory. The villa has been listed as a historic monument since 1975 and is a remarkable example of Art Nouveau architecture. Let's admire its façade made of white Savonnière stone adorned with carved flowers and its ironwork decorated with arum lilies. These petals and leaves are carved in stone and fashioned in metal. The whole shape, a maison à l'italienne, reminds one of a house in Tuscany. Step inside the two-storey building and you discover the lobby, bathed in natural light. The walls are adorned with green and scarlet tiling, custom made at the time of building. More flowers greet you on the ceiling, in white stucco. In front of you is the marble staircase covered with a red carpet leading you to the heart of the building. The ground floor is composed of large salons that were once used to welcome the guests of the Schutzenberger family. If you climb the imposing wooden staircase you reach the headquarters of the European Audiovisual Observatory. The European Audiovisual Observatory was created in 1992 its work focuses on the cinema, television and VOD industries in Europe. The first and second floors of the building host the observatory team, composed of 25 staff members from 10 different countries. Its in-house team of experts and analysts are divided into two different departments. The Department for Market Information provides statistical and economic reports on recent trends in cinema, television and video on demand in Europe. The Department for Legal Information examines the latest legal developments concerning the audiovisual sector in Europe. Let's move up to the second floor. The observatory team also manages databases with free access information on these sectors. You can find out how many people went to see a particular film in Europe thanks to Lumiere. You can also find out where your favourite TV series is available online, thanks to Lumia VOD. Mavis informs on the licences and jurisdiction of audiovisual services. Iris Merlin gives you short reporting on the latest legal developments in the European film, TV and VOD industries. And the AVMS database tells you how European media law is incorporated into national legislation. The observatory also organises some major public conferences on current hot topics in Europe throughout the year. In this historic villa, daily working life and heritage are closely linked. For example, two of the observatory's offices catch the eye because of their spectacular made-to-measure tiling. The first is clad in Turkish turquoise tiles with an amazing mosaic floor as what is now a working office used to be a bathroom. A second bathroom turned into an office features impressive bottle green tiling with classic Art Nouveau flower detail. Today the European Audiovisual Observatory manages a unique information network in Europe. The European Audiovisual Observatory is a unique source of facts, figures and analysis of cinema, 
television and VOD in Europe. It's one of the only organizations able to offer a comparative overview of the audiovisual sector in Europe today.